I've been getting a ton of questions from you guys in the comment section and I appreciate every single one of them. But the number one question that I get every single time I put a video up, how do you use your equity in your home to go purchase an investment property, more specifically a long-term buy and hold rental property? But pretty much every time you guys ask this question, I say not to do it. In this video, I'm gonna share with you why it is not a good idea, in my opinion, to use a home equity line of credit in order to purchase a long-term rental property. And I'm gonna give you a couple of safer and better alternatives where you could access that home equity that you have and not put your primary home, your primary residence in jeopardy. Let's get to it. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name's Jay Costa. I'm a real estate builder, investor, agent here in Northern New Jersey. And if you get any value out of this video at all, please hit that like button down below. Also consider subscribing if you wanna learn more about real estate investing. Uh, we're building a, a very nice community slowly here of like-minded people looking to get started in real estate investing, specifically using a home equity line of credit, which is a very powerful tool. Now onto the video. A home equity line of credit, or a HELOC for short, is a revolving credit line with a variable interest rate based on the equity that you have in your home. I have discussed this many times in the past in previous videos. I will put a link to all these videos in the description box down below, as well as up here in the corner. By the way, I get the corner wrong every single time. I don't know which one, it's one of these corners. So definitely check that out if you wanna learn more, uh, more in detail in regards to what a HELOC is, how to obtain one, and what to use them for and not use them for. But in this video, we're gonna specifically go over whether or not you should be using a home equity line of credit to access the equity in your house and putting it towards a rental property, a long-term rental investment property. Since home values have skyrocketed the past few years, obviously, you have more and more homeowners reaching out, trying to figure out a way to use their home equity in order to build wealth in real estate, which generally speaking can be a very good idea if done properly. One of the main ways that many homeowners want to access that home equity in order to put towards a rental property is taking out a home equity line of credit and using that line of credit as a down payment on an investment property. The idea here is obviously to put the equity that you have to work and put it into assets such as real estate that appreciate in value. Now, in a perfect world, this makes sense because the value of the property plus any cash flow that you get from the property outgains the interest rate that you're paying on the debt and you end up way, way ahead, especially the longer you wait. But obviously we live in a very far from perfect world and things can change quickly when markets and economic conditions go south. And don't be fooled, this can and does happen. Housing prices can go down and even more importantly, your rate can and will change when using a home equity of credit. I am more than okay with taking debt out of real estate and using it to build wealth, but it has to be good debt. What is good debt? Well, in real estate, good debt would be considered the number one loan product that's used to purchase real estate. And that is a long-term, something like a 30-year fixed rate home loan mortgage. The long-term fixed rate home mortgage is like the biggest advantage that real estate has investing wise when compared to other investment vehicles. It allows you to borrow a large sum of money locked in at a fixed rate for a long period of time. So let's say you're purchasing a $600,000 property. You put down a hundred thousand, you borrow the other 500,000. Any value gain that that property has is based on that full 600,000 instead of just the 100,000. So if it goes up 10%, that means it's up $60,000. Now, if you took $100,000 and put it into, you know, the stock market or something, if that goes up 10%, you're only up $10,000. Plus on a long-term rental property, your monthly payment stays exactly the same more or less until you pay off the loan. So the idea for long-term rental uh, real estate investing is that your monthly payment stays exactly the same in perpetuity until you pay off the loan and rental income goes up as it almost always does every single year. So the longer you wait, the more you're cash flowing and the longer you wait, the more the property is worth. This is all real estate investing 101. So if you have a couple hundred thousand dollars of equity in your house, why not take a home equity line of credit out and use that as a down payment on a long-term investment property. First, a HELOC is a variable interest rate product. So the interest rate is not fixed and that means your monthly payment is not fixed. The fact that your monthly payment will not be fixed at the exact same amount takes away this number one advantage, the biggest advantage that real estate investing has. Like I said, the long-term 30-year, let's say, 
fixed rate mortgage. When you take away that long-term fixed rate and long-term fixed payment, frankly, real estate investing gets much more risky. Number two, let's say you take the line of credit, the money that you have in equity as a line of credit and put it towards a down payment on investment property and then borrow the rest for like on like a long-term mortgage, you now have zero equity when you buy that home. So what happens if once you buy the property or anytime soon thereafter, the value of the home drops 10%. You are now underwater on that home 10% and you don't have a fixed monthly payment to account for. The payment could be much higher a year later if the uh, interest rate is raised. And not only that, since the home equity line of credit is based on the equity you have in your primary residence, you are now potentially underwater on both properties. This is a recipe for total disaster. Luckily, there are a couple alternatives that are more suited for long-term real estate investing. Number one is the cash out refinance. Now, most of you probably already know what a cash out refinance is. It's basically when you obtain a completely new mortgage for a higher amount and use it to pay off your previous mortgage. And basically you get paid at closing the rest. Money you get at the closing table for a cash out refi is tax-free, might I add. Now, this is the safest way in my view to gain access to the equity that you have in your home because you're just replacing your old mortgage with a newer, bigger one, fixed rate and a fixed payment, like I said, in perpetuity until you pay off the whole loan. But there are some distinct negatives to this, especially in this market. First is interest rates have obviously increased drastically in the last year or so. So if you have a mortgage on your property right now, chances are, good chance, a really good chance, that you're paying a lower interest rate than what's available right now. And you probably don't want to lose that ultra low, probably all time low interest rate that you have locked in. And frankly, I don't blame you. So this makes a cash out refi in this market slightly prohibitive. Second, depending on your state, the closing cost for a cash out refinance can be dramatic. It can be, can be a lot. It can be thousands of dollars. Now, when comparing this to something like a HELOC, a home equity line of credit, which has almost no closing costs. And once you get that cash out refi and pay those closing costs, it's a sunken cost, it's gone. This can and will eat into that potential equity that you're trying to get access to. And third, when you get a cash out refinance, when you take that equity out and get that cash out at closing, you're essentially paying interest on that money right away, whether you're using it or not. Now, this is in comparison to a HELOC which is set up completely differently. You can get a HELOC, okay, for $200,000, and you can keep that balance at zero, and you're not paying any interest at all. Or you can take, if you take $10,000 out, you're only paying interest on the $10,000, where if you got a cash out refinance for $200,000, you're paying interest on that $200,000 the second that you get it, and the second even that you put it in the bank account. The second way that I think that you can access your home equity in order to invest in real estate is what's called a home equity loan. Now, this is not a home equity line of credit, it's a home equity loan. It's similar but different in a few distinct ways. I made a previous video comparing a home equity loan to a home equity line of credit. I'll put a link in the description box down below as well as up in the corner. Now, a home equity loan is basically set up very similar to a home equity line of credit, but it is way more advantageous for long-term real estate investing. First, you're going to have a fixed interest rate. It's not a variable interest rate like a home equity line of credit. So that's gonna fix your payment for a certain period of time, which lends itself much better for long-term real estate investing because you know your costs, you know your monthly costs, what they're gonna be, and you could compare it to what you're gonna get rent-wise and make a decision based on that. If you were to use a home equity line of credit, you don't know what the interest rate is gonna be. Also, closing costs are very, very low and sometimes non-existent. This is compared to a cash out refinance that has thousands and thousands of dollars of closing costs. And lastly, with a home equity loan, this is basically a second loan on your home, so you're not losing your first mortgage with that juicy ultra low interest rate. In this market, in my opinion, a home equity loan is the best way to access your home equity in order to purchase real estate investments, specifically long-term real estate investments. Now, if you wanna go do a flip or like a new, a, a new development project, something like that, short term within a year or two uh, max, a home equity line of credit should be fine. But if it's a long-term rental property, do not use your home equity line of credit as a down payment or anything like that, the, because the longer term horizon you have for your investment, the more chances that something can go wrong with the interest rate on the variable interest rate products, that is the home equity line of credit. That being said, with a home equity loan, you still do need a plan to pay it back. You're gonna have to do a cash out refi in the future, or if the cash flow is so good, maybe you just 
profit a little bit less or maybe a lot less every month and pay off that home equity loan. And after a while, once that home equity loan is paid off, then you have a really, really juicy cash flowing real estate asset. The HELOC is still a great tool to build wealth in real estate, but it should not be used long term, in my opinion, ever. But where the HELOC shines is short term real estate investing like fix and flips and new development, new construction projects. I have a new development, new construction project coming up right now. So my next video is going to go into detail on that project. So if you want to learn more, I'm going to share with you what we bought the property for, what we think, uh, what we can build on the property, uh, how much of my HELOC I'm using on that property, on that project, and what I think the total profit is going to be based on what I think we could sell these units for. So if you have any interest in a specifically new construction uh, development, hit the subscribe button down below and the notification bell. That way you know when I'm putting that video up. So basically, if your time frame is longer than a year or two, you should not be using a home equity line of credit. You should be using a cash out refi or a home equity loan because both of these will provide you with a fixed monthly cost, a fixed rate, insulating you somewhat from market volatility and economic uncertainty. That is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for tuning into this one. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. I'm not right all the time. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm missing something. This is just my opinion. If you agree with me, if you disagree with me, let me know in the comments, comment section down below. If you have experience with uh, HELOCs in order to buy uh, rental properties or investment properties, drop it in the comment section down below as well, and I will see you next time.